I think that when I talk about XRP Ledger and XRP Healthcare, I give off a vibe that some of these projects are like charities, right? Especially when people think about the XRP Healthcare's attempt to dominate the African healthcare sector. But what people don't understand that these investors are companies and groups that are in business to make money. So it's not a charity at all. In fact, they have a set plan that they are executing systematically. Not only do they have that set plan that they're executing systematically, they're executing it to make money and they've got an exit plan. So a group of investors that have an exit plan are not looking to fail. They're looking to make money and in them making money, the hope that we also make money. Check this out, for instance. You have this company or this group called the Bonratti Investment Group. As you can see, their slogan is, we deliver. All right, we shall see about that. We aim to dominate and consolidate the multi-billion dollar African healthcare sector in partnership with XRP Healthcare Africa. Okay, now this is the ongoing problem. Highly fragmented Ugandan healthcare sector poor quality, slow and inaccessible healthcare services, motivated sellers have no exit. Okay. So at the moment, people are reluctant to get into business because there is no exit. Again, everything is poor and disorganized in terms of the healthcare sector in Uganda. So this problem is a well structured problem in a way, you know, we, we're aware of what the problem is and what the solution is which gives a company like Bonratti Investment opportunity to go in and execute, right? So the solution, according to them, is to dominate and consolidate the highly fragmented healthcare markets. They have the consolidation of the market and to provide quality, swift and accessible healthcare to modernize telemedicine and upskill. Of course, the other quadrants are innovate, patent research and incorporate health tech, incubate and partner. Now, this is also corporate. I've worked in the corporate sector before, so I'm familiar with these sort of diagrams and structures and stuff, right? The Bonratti Investment Group, why us? You know, they basically provide uh, details of why they are qualified to do this or where why they're well positioned to go into this particular venture. Okay, they have years of combined experience in the M&A, healthcare and business development sector. Uh, there's a one billion plus dollar and they want to exit in three to five years through ferocious acquisition of targets. Okay, so they mean business, they've got the money, combined wealth created with our board members as direct or indirect participants. So they have extremely wealthy members of their board that are actually putting their own money where their mouth is. They've got investor network spearheaded by fast capital, faster capital, their incubator. So they've got 1000 plus uh, people waiting to invest, right? Okay, so again, we talked about the aim to dominate and consolidate their vision to become a leading healthcare provider on the African continent by 2026. So this isn't something far in the future. This is just two years from now. They're hoping to have achieved this. They've got their experienced law firm, Shinobi Musoke and co-advocates getting involved. They've got their services to provide quality, swift and accessible healthcare, uh, roll up the small, medium-sized healthcare businesses, rolled up together into one big conglomerate. Um, look, they've got the market overview here. If you're interested, I'll leave the link to this in the description. You can go through it yourselves. Basically, they do a pretty good job in concisely presenting the problem. Okay, market adoption, etc., targeted businesses. But this is the interesting part for me, right? The roadmap. Okay, so 2023 that was last year. So we're now at 2024 to 2025. As you can see, it's the investment and acquisition stage. So they're making the first acquisition, which is already done, I believe. Identify potential investment targets and conduct due diligence. Acquire and merge identified targets into our portfolio. Streamline operations and create synergies amongst the acquired companies. And then they have milestones, complete 
first third acquisitions, completing a successful integration of acquired companies, achieving cost savings and efficiency implementations, improvements through streamlining operations. Okay, and then of course, 2026, they have the growth and expansion time. Okay, it lists what kind of things that they're expecting, including actual USD estimates. And here is the important part. In 2027, they hope to exit, okay? So prepare for exit options such as an IPO or acquisition by larger conglomerate. Work with investment bankers and legal advisors to optimize the exit strategy and valuation. Execute the exit plan and achieve a successful outcome for investors and shareholders. So these guys aren't messing around, okay? This thing is not a charity. It's not that's something that they're doing as a hobby or as a side project or something from the benefit of their heart or any of that. It's a standard investment project and they mean business. We're talking billions of dollars. And, you know, the thing I've learned about African projects is many of them start off quite conservatively, right? People go into business thinking, all right, we're going to make 500 billion. And then years later, they're making, you know, 700 billion, you know, <laughs> multiple times what they think that they're going to make. So there's a very, very good chance that not only this business is going to succeed, but it's going to far exceed its expectations. And being on the XRP ledger, we are positioned perfectly to benefit from such. Not financial advice, just a little bit of news on what's going on outside the United States concerning the XRP ledger and XRP generally. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.